guys, it's Courtney, and I am creating a very quick, clean and simple card using the Cup of Java stamp set by Penny Black. And this will be a one layer card. So I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp my image and we'll move right in with the Copic coloring. I'm gonna color this a lot different than I normally do. Because this is a round object, I want my highlight to be in the center. And I want to color this all different colors as far as the stripes and the pattern go. And I don't want to have to worry about bringing out 100 markers to achieve that. So I'm do doing all of my shading first and then I'll bring in my color. And I'm doing my shading with my cool gray markers. You can do this with any grays. I just kind of go towards the cool grays. I think they work the best. So I'm starting off with the C5 and just adding some shading on either side of the cup as well as the little bottom piece of the cup and the saucer underneath there would be some shading where it's from behind the cup itself I guess if that makes any sense. Then extending that out with the C3 and then finally the C1 I am leaving just a little bit of white in the center. I'm not like that will matter too much once we have everything colored. I'm also going to add some shading on the inside of the cup as well and where her leg is that would also create a shadow so I'm just putting a little bit of a shadow there with that same C5, C3, and C1 and then we'll go ahead and add color to the cup. So I wanted my, like I said, I wanted a couple of different colors on here and didn't want to have to worry about doing the shading. So I'm going to color these areas in solid. So for the BG72, I'm covering up the entire top part of this cup. And you can see that you still have that shading underneath from where we added the cool gray markers. So I don't have to worry about doing any other shading with the BG markers, just that one color is fine. I will take the BG75 and I'm just gonna go through these little squiggly lines or designs that are on the cup. Now for a teeny tiny area like this, I've heard a lot of people say that they have a hard time with Copic markers getting into teeny tiny areas like this. You just wanna make sure that you're using the very tip of the marker and barely touching the paper. The ink will spread a little bit but I find that it spreads less once you have kind of like a base layer down and being we already have those cool grays down plus that BG72, I didn't really have a problem. So for the little stripes, I'm gonna bring in some BV markers and I'm just gonna color these every other one. Again, not having to worry about doing any shading because we have those cool gray markers down first. Next, we'll move on to this girl here sitting in this cup. I'm going to start off with her skin tones and I'm going to only be using three colors here for her skin and her hair just because these areas are pretty teeny tiny. Oh, I did color the inside of the cup too with that BV02. Um, so I'm going to start off with my lightest color, just mapping out my darkest areas, which will be underneath where her hair is and on her arms and legs, which are super skinny. You don't even have to do any shading here because they are so skinny or maybe just stick to two colors. Next, I'll go in with my darkest color and go over those same areas that we had mapped out with the E01, just concentrating a little bit of a shadow underneath on the bottom part of her leg and arm. Then extend those areas out with the E11 and then finally going back in with the E01 to fill in the rest of those areas. I did bring in my R20 just to add a little bit of color to her cheeks and her lips and then brought back in that E01 just to blend out her cheek color just a little bit. For her hair, I'm going to start off with my darkest color. Whenever I color hair, I tend to start with my darkest first. And I'm just doing some flick lines from where her little messy bun starts and where her hair is kind of pulled back from her bangs. And then just a few little flicks in that messy bun just to kind of give it some texture. Next, I'll go in with the E57 and I'm going to just extend those flicks out a little bit further. Again, I'm barely touching the tip of the marker to the paper here. And finally, I'm going to go in with the E55 and just fill in those highlight areas. I go over these areas very quickly because I want to maintain that highlight and I don't want to over blend here. I want to see those flick lines. Next for her pants, I wanted these to at least appear to be black. So I am using my black marker, but I'm also going to be doing some shading with some darker C markers. 
So I'm just putting a little bit of shading on the bottom part of her pants for that one leg that's in front. And for the leg behind that, I'm just coloring that in solid. I'll just thicken up that line of the black with the C7, then the C5, and just leaving a very small highlight for the C3 on the top part of her pants. For her shirt, I didn't want to color this where it blended in too much with the cup, but I did want to kind of keep with the same color scheme, I guess. So I'm going to bring in some V markers, and again, just bringing in this, the lightest color first to map out my darkest areas. There's going to be shadows underneath her arm and underneath her little collar there, also on either side of the collar because that is a round object. So you want to make sure that you preserve a highlight there in the center. Going in with the darkest color, putting in most of my shading with the darkest color, but there are some areas that I leave just for my darkest mid-tone. You don't necessarily need to put all of your shadows the same color. Blending that out with the lightest mid-tone and then finally back to that V01 and blending all of that together. For the little cup that she's holding, I wanted to bring in those BG markers that we used in the beginning on the cup just to kind of bring that out a little bit more. So again, just coloring this with the same three colors that I used on the cup, but just doing the shading on either side. Again, round object, highlight in the center. Also doing the back part of the cup that you can see behind where the actual coffee is inside of it. And for the coffee, I'm not going to do any blending or any shading at all for this. I'm just going to go in with my E57 and color that in solid. And I wanted to create a shadow underneath the cup itself. I do fix up any areas with my colorless blender because I tend to be a little bit messy sometimes. So for my shadow, I'm going to start off with the darkest color, which is the C5, and I'm just going to basically just draw a line underneath the object itself that you're creating a shadow for. Then I'll bring in the C3, and I'm going to make that line a little bit thicker and a little bit longer, and then finally going in with the C1 and make that even thicker and even longer yet. You can kind of play around, once, especially once you get to the lightest color, you can kind of play around with your shadow a little bit and make sure you get it to the way you want it. Once my coloring was done, I wanted to add a little bit of detail to the side of the card panel. So I'm just going to take my T-square ruler here, and I'm using my grid mat just to make sure I can, <laughs> I can draw a straight line. And I'm going to start with the BG72, and I'm just going to saturate my paper a little bit. So I'm going right along the edge of my ruler here, and you can use any straight edge for this. And I'm just going to get my paper saturated a little bit because I'm just doing a little bit of shading here. So it's always best to saturate the paper before you go in with any shading. It just helps your alcohol markers to blend a little bit easier, and regardless of the alcohol markers that you choose to use. Next, for the shadow color here, I'm just going to draw a straight line, and I thought that maybe I could blend that out, but I had a hard time blending this. So what I ended up doing once I got to the other side or once I filled in this entire area with the BG72, I ended up going back and flicking out some of my color just because I wasn't getting the blend that I was looking for. And keep in mind that alcohol markers, you can do this with. So if you don't have enough shading or enough shadows that enough that you're what you're looking for you can always go back in and add more it's harder to take them away so always go a little bit light-handed with your shadows and keeping in mind that you can always go back and add more so here i am going to go back and add more of that shadow color and this time i am flicking my color out a little bit when i do my flicks i obviously start on the that line that we had drawn in and I'm flicking away from myself until the marker is no longer touching the paper. You're kind of like sweeping away the color. And I'm going to go ahead and go in with the BG72 and I'm doing the same thing. I'm starting about midway where my flicks left off for the darkest color and I'm flicking to the edge of the paper. And then I'll go back in and you know fill in any areas that I maybe didn't flick all the way to the edge or didn't get a perfect blend, you can go over it as many times as you want. Next, I took my T-square ruler again, and just keep in mind that if you're using markers with your ruler, you're gonna wanna clean it off because you can kind of smear your color around, and I just use an alcohol wipe, and that will take it right up. 
So this time I'm going to take my black marker, this is the 100 marker, and I'm just drawing a straight line. So on the one side of that stripe that we've already colored. And the top part, I didn't feel like it was, it wasn't totally, it was straight, but it kind of smeared a little bit. So in order to fix that up, I just took a white gel pen and just kind of touched up some of that area so that it did appear to be still straight. And finally, I took my VersaFine Onyx Black ink as well as the sentiment from the stamp set and I just stamped that directly above her, more towards the left to kind of even things out a little bit. Once that was done, I adhered everything to an A2 size card base and that is the card for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by and have a great day.